Well, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 multiplayer beta starts tomorrow. I'm excited. I actually just bought the digital deluxe copy, I believe, on the PlayStation 4 yesterday. So I believe that the pre-download is coming today live, I think at 1 p.m. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm waiting. I have my PlayStation on. I'm waiting for it to happen here. How many of you guys have actually gotten the pre-order for just to gain access? I know some of you get the pre-orders on Amazon or some other place and then return it after just so that you can play it even if you're not going to actually buy it. Seems a little strange, but I know, hey, whatever, to each their own. But what I want to talk about here is not so much about Black Ops 4. I am excited about it, but as, as, as excited as I have been for the last two, I was actually excited for World War II. And I think World War II, despite low sales figures and despite maybe a lot of other people grumbling, I thought it was a good game. I thought it played fluently, like the mechanics were good, the maps were okay. Uh, I'm primarily a search and destroy player, so that's how I base it on, not necessarily for the other game modes. Uh, but I thought it was fine, like, but again, it dropped off, it didn't do that well. The Black Ops typically do well. It is boots on the ground. It went back World War II or whatever, you know, when they said non-futuristic and yet people still didn't buy it. So why is that? What is this? You know, honestly, I, I'm trying to figure it out myself as to why I'm not interested as much anymore. I don't, you know, I, again, I played it for so long and maybe it's not fresh and new anymore, but I mean, I played it crazy. Before YouTube, Call of Duty 4, uh, Modern Warfare, like it was a drug to me. Like I literally could not wait to get home after work and immerse myself in that multiplayer world. I absolutely loved it. And it was almost always search and destroy. Had a great time playing it. And I enjoyed playing World at War, even though it was a bit, you know, the hit detection and everything was kind of crappy on it. That was in the dark days of Treyarch when they weren't as great as they are today. And then Modern Warfare 2 played the crap out of that game. Modern Warfare 3 still enjoyed that. Still enjoyed that, and again, it still remains the best-selling Call of Duty of all time. And maybe it was that expectation. Maybe it was because Modern Warfare 2 did so well, they expected that one. But that was kind of the, the time when the actual Infinity Ward uh, members left. You know, they, they went and they formed Respawn Entertainment. But so people were like, oh, is this one going to be just as good? Is it going to be better? Are they going to correct the issues that were in, uh, you know, Modern Warfare 2? And then it was like, well, no. And I think because of that, because it was like, it's just not there anymore, that it started to decline. But I think there's other reasons why Call of Duty is not as popular. Why I personally you know, don't feel the same way that I did in the past. And it's not just that it was new because I enjoyed Call of Duty 4, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, um, even Black Ops, which was a horrendous launch. Again, not the greatest launch for Treyarch uh, during those days. But once they had it fixed, the maps were great in Black Ops. So if I look back there, it wasn't like terribly fond of the weapons, but the map layouts were really, really good. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed playing the multiplayer. And then Modern Warfare 3 still had a blast playing with other people, Search and Destroy. But after that, you know, and I don't think it was necessarily just because of Advanced Warfare, you know, the boost jumping or the futuristic, because really it's not that for me. Like, I don't care. You can put a skin on it. You know, World, uh, oh, I was going to say World Goons, Nitro, you know, who uh, works for You Always Win, I know he said, well, what does it really matter if they look futuristic or if the guns don't shoot bullets and their lasers or something? As long as it still plays the same, as long as the maps still play the same, then really what does it matter? And I kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I get your point. But the mechanics have changed. Other than that, I can't really pinpoint exactly what it is that made me kind of lose that I don't know, that that desire that like, oh man, I gotta hop on, I gotta play with my friends, I gotta play some search. It's just not the same. And I think part of it for me, without going into too much detail, because I think uh, uh, Meaty, Meatwagon and myself are gonna go into this in the podcast. We're gonna talk a little bit about Call of Duty, the rise and fall personally, and maybe even from a business standpoint. But we wanna know what your opinions are, right? Like, if you were a diehard Call of Duty fan, like, what is it? If you don't feel that anymore, what do you think it is? Try and pinpoint it. And I don't, you know, maybe it's the money and everything like that, but. You know, that's the easy scapegoat. I'm like, oh, it's too expensive. It's 129. We get it. It's expensive. You know, forcing that and everything like that. I'm talking about ignore all of that. The gameplay itself. The gameplay itself. You know, your experience. What has changed there? You know, because that money, honestly, if you're thinking about people like, oh, you got to spend way too much money on it. I know I'm making that voice like everyone talks like this. That's just what I'm doing. I'm not trying to make fun of you. That's just the way I am. Uh, so anyway, you know, if you're saying, oh, it's too expensive. Listen, 
of there were surveys done on Fortnite people, okay, Fortnite players, and if you play Fortnite, out of a thousand people, you know, random people asked, seventy percent of them said that they spent money on Fortnite. Of that seventy percent, the average amount of money that they've spent so far, and this is only from January to like June or July, so half the year. $87. By the end of the year, they will have probably spent more money on that free game than paying for digital deluxe or even in the enhanced. You're going to be spending more money on a, on that game. And maybe it's, you know, people don't realize it's this microtransaction philosophy that makes these companies so rich. It's like, ah, oh, it's only 10 bucks here. It's only 10 bucks there. Oh, I'll just get a little bit of money, $5 worth of V-Bucks or whatever. By the end of the year, you're spending way more than that AAA game with the season pass. So don't tell me that it's money. Maybe it's the upfront money that you don't like, but guess what? It's it's not it's not any different than this free game that most people are playing. And they're like, oh, well, I really love that. Well, I really like Call of Duty. I don't mind spending that money. And it's about the same as people that love Fortnite or whatever game that you love. You don't really mind spending that money if you get enjoyment out of it. It's just not the same though. And, and I, wish I, I wish it could change. Part of it, and I'm just saying without going into detail, is I think YouTube. I think YouTube for me has ruined a game that I used to, you know, chat and, and make friends. Like before YouTube, my friends with us was full on the PS3 and it was by meeting people in the game. People that we would laugh, but when we played together, we played as a team. We communicated as a team. We went like all try hard mode, everything like that. And that's how we enjoyed it. But I find it's increasingly difficult to find people that are like just chill. They're not there to troll anyone. They're not melty. They're not spamming the mic with their their music. Even if I like the music, it's not even that about the music. The fact that you're you know you're playing DJ and you're ruining it. But I think YouTube and all these trick shot and troll videos and all these other wannabe kids out there trying to do the same thing. Even though even if they record it, nobody's gonna watch it. But for the fact that they're just doing it thinking it's funny, they're kind of ruining it, the experience. And for me, I think that's a big part of it. I think YouTube and what people find amusing and popular has sort of bastardized the game. They poison the gaming culture by people imitating the unoriginality of the sheeple, you know, bleeding into these games. And I think that for me has ruined it. No longer can I go on there. Most of the time I have to mute everyone. And I don't want to mute everyone, not especially in Search and Destroy. I want to communicate and be like, I'm taking bomb here, going here, I've got a guy up there. You know what I mean? That's part of me, it's part of the immersive experience. It's part of this, I'm playing a soldier in a game that's a little slower paced, but a little more methodical, a little more strategic in how you play. But I can't do that if I have to mute every annoying person and I have to get out of lobbies because someone's running around with a shield or just trying to corner camp people, largely because they've seen some YouTube video and they're like, that's really funny, I'm gonna do that too. You're ruining the game and you're ruining it for a lot of people. I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, an answer, I don't know if they can change that. It is what it is, but for me, that's, I think, what's ruining it. But I want to know, and Meaty wants to know, what it is that, you know, if you love the game, what do you think it actually is? You know, the, the, the price point is an easy one. Activision Greed, blah, 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 heard it all before. Beating a dead horse, don't really care about that. If that's your opinion as to why, cool. But I don't really care about that. I want to know more about the game itself. Ignoring all of the price points, or I can't afford this, or I can't afford that, or whatever. You know what I mean? I want to know what it is about the game, the game culture, uh, all those sort of aspects there that you think might have made it less appealing to you now. Because the game plays smooth. The mechanics, the way that the game feels is way better than it has, has it's ever been basically. If I look at it, I go back and I play COD 4, I'm like, holy mackerel. You know, I love this game, but it does not play as nice as Black Ops 3, not even Black Ops 2. You know, Black Ops 2 forward, huge changes in the movement, I think, you know, from, from that point forward. I think they've done a great job, but there's something lacking. And I don't know if it's the maps, I don't know if it's the culture or a combination of everything, but we want to know your thoughts, so leave them in the comments below.